What's up and welcome back Raptors Digest. It's Josh and today I wanted to give a deeper introduction to a name that is currently taking Toronto by storm and that's DJ Wilson. The 25 year old signed a 10 day contract with the Raptors after they essentially lost their entire lineup to COVID protocols. Before diving into his professional career, I wanted to highlight some of his personal life and lead up to the NBA. Born Devontae Jalen Wilson, he was born and raised in Mount Sashta, California while attending Capital Christian High School in Sacramento. Going into Wilson's junior season of high school, he suffered a vertebrae fracture which sidelined him for many games that year, taking away some of his recruiting attention. However, despite that back injury, Wilson shot up 5 inches in height during a growth spurt that year, bringing him a powerful 6'8 listing in high school. By June 2013, he recovered enough to attend a University of California Showcase event, where he dropped 22 points and 8 rebounds versus other top prospects in the region. This led many D1 programs to start recruiting Wilson, and he ultimately accepted to Michigan over destinations such as USC, Gonzaga, Northwestern, and Harvard. At the time of signing his National Letter of Intent, Wilson was believed to be the first ever Sacramento area player to sign with a Big Ten Conference school. He ended up being the 68th overall ranked prospect in his high school class. Wilson had an injury riddled freshman year at Michigan U. However, team staff with the Wolverines were able to detect and correct a knee deformity in Wilson, helping to improve his vertical jump by 8 inches through neuromuscular therapy as a Wolverine. He spent three seasons at Michigan and began to post very impactful career highs for them as a junior preparing to declare for the NBA draft. After a solid regular season, Wilson averaged 15.6 points on 53.8 field goal shooting with 5.0 rebounds and 2.0 blocks over 7 playoff games, ultimately helping Michigan win the 2017 Big Ten title. All season he managed to lead the Wolverines in rebounds and blocks as well, averaging 5.3 and 1.5 respectively. In summary, these accomplishments led many media outlets such as Sports Illustrated to project him as a first round draft pick in the upcoming 2017 NBA draft. And lucky for him, that's just what happened. Now for a breakdown of his professional career. Wilson has previously played for a few organizations in the NBA, beginning with the Milwaukee Bucks in 2017, where he was drafted 17th overall. The Bucks selected the 6'10 power forward to help fill the shoes of an injured Jabari Parker, who had just recently torn his ACL. It took Wilson nearly two weeks after his rookie debut to record his first rebound and points, resulting in multiple G League assignments that season. After working through some rookie struggles, he unfortunately missed the opening 22 games of the following 2018-19 season due to a hamstring injury. Somehow, with only 71 minutes of NBA experience, the Bucks still decided to exercise Wilson's $3 million third year rookie contract option. This decision may reflect some of the potential and or character that the Milwaukee management crew continued to see in Wilson despite a very underwhelming start to his professional career. It was not until that ensuing 2018-19 season that he recorded his first double-double with a 10-point, 14-rebound performance and a win versus the Knicks. On January 31st of that season, he actually established a new career high in points versus the Toronto Raptors as he put up 16 points in the matchup. Then, on the final night of regular season, Wilson set a new record of 18 points, 17 rebounds, and 4 assists against OKC. And this was apparently enough for the Bucks to again exercise a contract option for Wilson, this time paying $4.5 million going into his fourth season. But the 2021 campaign would mark the end of the road for Wilson in Milwaukee, as he ended up being reassigned to the G League once again. This ultimately led the Bucks to deal him alongside DJ Augustine, the double DJ trade, to the Houston Rockets in exchange for PJ Tucker and Rodion's Karooks. Considering Milwaukee went on a successful title run that season with PJ Tucker playing critical minutes, I'm sure Bucks fans are content with that move. Wilson spent a brief 26 game stint with the Houston Rockets where he averaged 6.1 points and 3.8 rebounds while shooting 42% from the floor. For the most part, Wilson's numbers didn't improve greatly from his Milwaukee days, leading the Rockets to decline his qualifying offer, effectively making him a free agent this past offseason. Sam Presti and the Thunder front office stated in an interview that they had been previously interested in taking DJ Wilson at 21st overall in the 2017 NBA Draft. Instead, they ended up with Terrence Ferguson, who turned out to be the more effective player out of the gate for sure, but it made sense that OKC would keep tabs on Wilson over the years. Logically, it was then Presti who signed Wilson during that free agency this past offseason, but this was only a training camp deal, and Wilson did not have the most competitive showing over his two preseason performances. 
Wilson did not end up cracking the Thunder's 15-man roster, unfortunately, ending up being waived, but he still managed to stick around in OKC and sign with their G League affiliate, the Oklahoma City Blue. And before getting the call from Toronto, he was averaging 13.9 points and 9.6 rebounds over 13 games in the G League this season. Now with the G League season on hold to facilitate this insane amount of NBA vacancies due to COVID, Wilson is making the most of his 10-day contract with the Raptors. Let's take a look at his last few performances. During the game against Cleveland, DJ Wilson joined Kyle Lowry and Alvin Robertson as the only Raptors players to record five steals in a debut performance, already in the Raptors' record books. He did this in addition to scoring 18 points on 6 of 8 shooting, collecting 8 rebounds and 4 assists, while adding one steal just for good measure. Wilson was one of the only bright spots, and I mean one of the only ones, from that horrifying 144-99 defeat by the Cavaliers. Although his next performance would come off the bench versus Philadelphia, Wilson was utilized by Nick Nurse in some of the most crucial moments down the stretch. The undermanned Raptors may have lost again, but Wilson picked right back up where he left off with an efficient 9 points, 6 rebounds, and only 13 minutes of play while committing 0 turnovers. Not to mention, Nick Nurse made the very bold decision to match Wilson up against Embiid on defense for at least the last few possessions of that game. And as I said during the live stream, although Embiid had a very productive night, I think Toronto did a decent job by committee of slowing him down, which Wilson was a part of. Nick Nurse definitely threw the kitchen sink at Embiid, but it was not enough to get the job done for the Raptors, and they lost another game during this COVID protocol crisis. Given the lineup situation, nobody is reasonably expecting Toronto to be winning these games, but the entertaining redeemer is definitely getting to watch hungry players like DJ Wilson pursue these 10-day contracts and ultimately try to prove that they belong in the league. When the Raptors roster is completely healthy, we already have enough six foot nine players that bring Wilson's skill set, and many of which are younger and flat out better. But in the meantime, Wilson has been a worthwhile investment for Toronto, and regardless of what happens here, he is certainly boosting his worth league wide. He is by no means old, and he's reportedly been determined to crack back into the league ever since being reassigned to OKC, spending his free time studying the schemas of different NBA teams, hoping to get this phone call. The power forward was quoted saying, I think it's just a matter of trusting the work that I've put in up until this point, knowing that I'm an NBA player. I can play at this level and showcasing that, not getting too ahead of myself, just going out there with confidence to do stuff. Hopefully that translates. Wilson is making it clear that he stayed ready for the call and fans in Toronto have fallen in love with him since. On live stream, we all talked about how Raptors fans always seem to develop an affinity for 10 day contract players, similar to what happened with Freddie Gillespie last season. Even though I don't think Wilson will necessarily be rewarded with a contract like Freddie, it has been a lot of fun watching guys like him and Daniel Otoru fill in. I want to thank you guys for listening and encourage you to leave your thoughts on DJ Wilson in the comments below. Oh, and while you're at it, liking the video and subscribing to the channel always helps us out a ton. You guys are the best, and as much as this 10-day trial period has been interesting, I'm looking forward to getting our team healthy again to compete for a play-in spot. I'll see you guys soon on livestream, but until then, I'm signing off.